This is the new Audi A5, and it's essentially an A4, only in a slightly snazzier jacket to help make it stand out and become more appealing. Audi has also fitted it with stiffer suspension, which is a bit like swapping your sensible shoes for a pair of trainers. That makes it feel more sporty. Now, there is a price to pay for these changes. You see, the A5 costs, on average, around £2,000 more than the equivalent A4, and it starts from just under £31,000. But if you click up there to go to carwire.co.uk, you can compare our offers from dealers and buy a price you're confident in. And on average, people save £3,600 on a new car through Carwire. Now, on the inside, it's identical to the A4, but that's no bad thing because the design is really nice, clean and simple. Maybe it doesn't feel quite as flashy as a Mercedes C-Class Coupe, but the quality is actually better. I mean, all the materials, they're lovely, they're robust. It feels very well screwed together. I like some of the features as well. For instance, this car has the, the temperature settings for the climate control actually within the dials. It's really, really smart, that is. Then there's the infotainment system. So as standard, the car gets a seven inch screen but this one has the upgraded system. Oh my gosh, it's really sleek, very fast to use, very intuitive. It's, it's one of the very best infotainment systems you can buy. Also, you can get it with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And if you click up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of it. Now, this particular car is fitted with Audi's virtual cockpit. So instead of normal traditional dials, I've got a full digital display for the driver and I can flick between different screens very easily without taking my eyes off the road. And look at that, I can change the view so I can either have big dials or a huge Navi map. I mean, that's great. So too is the fact that you've got large door bins which are big enough to hold a one and a half litre bottle of water which brings us on to practicality because after all this is a coupe so practicality is impaired somewhat now to get into the back i just help you out by having a seat which will slide forward automatically and then return to your original position i'll just move this one out of the way as well so you can see what the heck's going on back here so i'll just pull this seat back into my position now audi has made this a5 slightly longer and wider and taller than the old one. And as a result, there is more room in the back, though there's still not a great deal. So look, I'm sitting up and my head is wedged against the roof. Now, knee room is okay-ish. I can slouch a bit, but still taller people won't like it too much in the back of this car. I also find it a little bit cramped in the foot area. And on the whole, I think the BMW 4 Series is more comfortable for carrying rear passengers. But it's not all bad, so there are a few useful practical features in the back of this car. So we've got a cup holder there, a little storage bin there. Here, this is quite handy actually, because I've had enough of wearing this jacket. It's a little bit too tight on me. <laughs> I think I bought it during a thinner period. I've got a little hook there I can hang it on, which is handy. So too is the fact that you can get the car with not only an armrest and a special cubby there, but this rear seat splits three ways, so you can carry two people and skis and then you can fold the chairs down if you want. And if you notice as well, the actual gap through into the back there is nice and wide. Right, that brings us on to the boot. So come on chair, out the way. It does take its time. So this A5 actually has the largest boot in its class. It's actually not that much smaller than the A4s. And the opening's really big as well. The load lip isn't too high. It's a really useful square shape. You've got some cubbies here and here, tethering points. You can lower the seats from here if you want to. You've got a curry hook to hang your shopping off there. And under here is a space saver spare wheel. Now, if you want to see just how much stuff you can fit in this car's boot, click up there to watch our detailed practicality video. You'll also be able to see what it's like with two people in the back of the car and just how easy it is to fit a child seat. Let's be honest though, coupes aren't about practicality. How they drive, is far more important. Like I said at the beginning of this video, the A5 is essentially an A4 in a different outfit, and it has slightly stiffer suspension, and that makes it feel more sporty. It also makes it feel a little bit more uncomfortable over bumps. Now, you can get this car with three different settings, normal suspension, or sport suspension, which is lower and stiffer still, and makes the car even more bouncy, or the best bet is the optional adaptive dampers, which have a comfort mode for cruising about and a sports mode, which stiffens things up when you want to throw the car down a twisty road and it stops the car while leaning so much in the corners. This car is front wheel drive, whereas something like a BMW 4 Series or a Mercedes C-Class are normally rear wheel drive. And I'll put this into perspective for you. 
a Volkswagen Polo is front wheel drive. A Formula One car is rear wheel drive. So yeah, enough said really. Now you can of course get this Audi with quattro all wheel drive and that gives you more grip but it does make it handle slightly better but still overall I don't think this A5 is as much fun to drive as its German rivals. Sorry Audi, it's just not. One thing I can't complain about this car though is just how easy it is to drive and to live with. So all the controls, they're nicely weighted and visibility actually is pretty good for a coupe. I mean at the back window I can see quite a lot which is unusual for this kind of car and if you click up there to join me for a 360 degree passenger ride video you can see for yourself. The A5 is also a very quiet car when you're travelling along even at speed and then there's its engines which are among the best in the business. And you know, if I was buying this car, I would probably go for the two litre turbo petrol because it gives reasonable economy and it feels nice and fast and revvy. Another good choice if you want performance and economy is one of the V6 diesels. Most people though will go for the engine in this car. It's the two litre diesel with 190 horsepower. And yeah, it's fairly flexible. It's nice and quiet and it gives a pretty good account of itself. Now it's supposed to be able to do 64 miles per gallon. And if I look down at the trick computer, it says I'm doing I'm doing 50, which is actually not bad at all. Also, this engine can get from 0 to 62 miles an hour in just 7.7 .7 seconds if you go for the excellent seven-speed S-Tronic automatic gearbox. And that's because it has a launch control function. So I'm gonna engage it now. To do that, I put the car into ESP Sport mode, the drive select into dynamic, the gearbox into the sport setting, and just hold the car on the brake, throw the throttle, release the brake. Or a bit of wheel spin there because it is a very slippery surface that will have affected the time but we are now doing 60 and brake so i don't go off the end of the track and we get the hazard lights to warn people that i've braked very hard okay let's see how fast that was So a little bit off the manufacturer's time, probably would have got closer if it had had all-wheel drive grip. Anyway, let's move on to five annoying things about this new Audi A5. This particular car costs £43,000, so you'd think that it would have wing mirrors that fold in automatically when you lock the car, but no, you have to do it your bloody self. The hardware for the infotainment system eats into the glove box space, which means that while you can fit the manual in there, there's not really much room for anything else. This new Audi A5 looks rather like the old Audi A5, so your neighbours may not be able to tell you've actually got a brand new car. The entry-level car doesn't get satellite navigation, nor lumbar support as standard, which is a bit mean considering the price of this car. Don't buy the optional variable rate steering, because it just feels weirdly assisted. No. However, it's not all bad. There's plenty to like about the new A5, such as these following features. This new A5 is up to 60 kilograms lighter than the old A5 for improved efficiency, better road holding, and to make it easier to push out the way. When you close the door, a little seatbelt butler hands you your belt. Probably not. According to Audi, the A5 is the most aerodynamic car in its class. It's, yeah, it's all very swoopy. The A5 standard safety features include auto emergency braking and a pop-up bonnet to help protect pedestrians. The Audi Connect Safety and Service Package allows you to control some of the car's functions using a mobile phone app, such as being able to unlock it or lock it remotely. Now, if you click up there, you can get more information and save an average of £2,500 on a new A5 at carway.co.uk. So then, what's my overall verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the new Audi A5. Yeah, some rivals are more fun to drive, but it's still a great car. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on the big car wow logo to subscribe to our channel. If you click on the individual video windows, you can watch our detailed practicality, 360 degree passage ride and infotainment video reviews. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the A5 Road on the car's sat-nav.